Where are you going, Mitch? Well, I'm going to the dentist. He says he can do miracles if I'm willing to pay the price. And uh, I think that's your look. I don't really? think you need anything else. I think that is I'm you. I'm telling you, I'm a chick magnet the way I am. <laughs> I don't see any reason for changing. <laughs> what do you think of his teeth, Kim? I think he's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Just a reminder, now the reminder is to try to turn it up so that my family doesn't say, you never answer your phone. I said, well, I didn't hear a ring. Good reason. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I first came here with my parents. Um, they bought a cottage down in Carolina, and I built my place in the mid-80s. And uh, was a member of the Lake Association. I mean, I was president during the 90s. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, Vice President Roy took over when I got sick for a while. And I've been treasurer, you name it, I've done. Okay, that's why I immediately thought of you for this particular oh, program. <laughs> and I'm going to leave you to right, it because thanks. I don't need to be here. Thank you for coming and volunteering. Uh, yeah, no problem. So I brought with me a, uh, when you go get your snacks, look at the uh, lake. I call that picture that I have on this tray over there. It's engraved. And it's a picture of the lake and it shows the water depths. And uh, it's pretty cool. My son and his girlfriend gave it to me for uh, Father's Day. I wish I had a microphone. <clears throat> but anyway, so what I thought I'd do is I got three sections. I want to talk about the 50s when we first kind of started as an association. And then I want to get into what I did about 15 years ago. I did um, family histories. What I did is I put together a little chart for people to, to fill in. Uh, they talked about when they came to the lake, what they liked about the lake, the cool things around the lake. So that's more, that's kind of fun. This will, this will be, you know, you may want to go down to the marijuana hearing after a while. But it's up to you. <laughs> Oh, maybe we should lock the doors now so we can get out of here. We won't lock the doors, sorry. <clears throat> this is um, Charlie Bagley before he passed away, several years before he passed away. Gave me a whole bunch of um, papers, pages he had typed up over the years um, that, that really talked about his history here and what he did and where he went. The first meeting was in Loretta Hall in 1958, September 13th. There were 28 cottages present. So we have now, what do we have now? About 230 or 40? The people elected were Charlie Bagley, president. And Charlie was president, I don't know, 25 years probably, at least. Vice president, Matthew Horlick, I don't know, Wilbur Wallfield. Some of you may know these names, some of you might not. So the officers reported that the lowering of Secaucus had started September 13th, which would have been 58, and continued at the rate of 11 inches per week for three weeks, or until the lake is three feet below the high water mark. Since money was needed for all these notices and expenses, membership voted that the annual Membership dues would be two dollars, so it's fifty dollars now. So this is going to require some audience participation, though. We'll get to that. That's to do with dynamite. We'll get to that. <laughs> On the Bagley's one with the Jolly Green Giant. Remember that one? <laughs> How old were you then? <laughs> Ten. <laughs> oh. Quite a while. Mike and Joan Grace's cottage. Bill Winrow added the golf contest. Sunday the canoe races and sailboat races were in the morning. They were held at Dick Jones's cottage, which they still are. It's now Fredrickson's. And then that ski show in the afternoon. Foot barge equipped with a tower meant to drive pilings into the lake in the hope of getting work 
putting in piers for cottage homes. They built four piers that summer, the winter and the winter and the frozen water along with the rise and fall due to the firing pulled the pilings right out of the ground. So never again were any piers attempted with using pilings. That's before my time for sure. The barge sat there until it was used to transport a dynamite expert out to a very large rock pile in the lower lake. The expert placed charges around the islands, the barge withdrew, and your part. Boom! All right, <laughs> yeah, that's good. No more island. That's what he wrote, no more island. There were a lot of those. I mean, when I came here in the 70s, there were a lot more, Dan, right? Mm -hmm. Than there are now? Yeah. It's for erosion and other reasons why, I guess. Yeah. If it's to stabilize thinking about the summer colony, on the two lakes, worked well for a few years. When the access to the dump was curtailed, Wednesday afternoon, Saturday, and Sunday until five, many of the cottage owners didn't want to leave their trash um, because you know, obviously they don't want to leave it there all week. But then there was a lot of disposal. Yeah. They put on, uh, <clears throat> the club always added new members. It's still going today. We'll talk about that too in a few minutes. They put on a show that we were asked to perform in many lakes around York County. Each year, requests came in, and kids put on several shows. Dan, did you, <coughs> did you ever do that? Like back in the day, go to different lakes and put on shows? Yeah. Um, well, you put on shows at different lakes. But... Oh, you competed? Yeah. Oh, I thought, I thought maybe you did. You could have gone along with me, honestly. I could. <laughs> my brother, you know. Yeah, people in the crowd that know the truth. I got my, so. my sister-in-law, my two brothers, my wife. I'm related to everybody. <laughs> the lake and, and what happened before 1850? Um, Maybe I, some of you, some of you historians. Well, actually, I need some help with it. I've been All researching right. in the library and old books and different books that people in the community of association on, and yeah. I was looking for this. So, right. if you just bear with me while I read it, and if you notice anything wrong or anything you can add, it, it would be a great help. It's lake life. Mary, yeah. Oh, okay, I'm sure. All right. I'm. I'm uh, uh, yeah, you can I have stage fright. <laughs> no, don't worry. Okay. It's lake life, late summer on Secaucus, that time of year as we approach Labor Day weekend. So it might be nice to time to reflect upon how our lake got its start. In a valley at the foothills of the White Mountains, a brook flowed southeasterly to Little Ossipee Lake. The Secaucus Indians of the Abenaki Nation traveled yearly from Freiburg to Saco the route now known as Secaucus Trail. They camped and fished upon the banks of a brook long before it became a pond or lake. The area was known to be an excellent hunting spot. The early European visitors used, used the area that was part of the Alma, Chiu, Co, the land of the little dog, for hunting as well. The water body flo that flowed through the valley was named Brown Brook after one of the early settlers who lived, farmed, hunted. <laughs> actually hire usually a college kid to, to sit in a chair and watch those weeds and make sure we don't get them in our lake. Because we don't want them. We don't want to be picked upon. We don't want to be um, we don't want to be uh arrowhead. <clears throat> to date we've inspected three hundred and eighty six boats. That's really this, this season. That's good. It's a lot. Um, so this is coming up. This is what, what I said everybody's invited. We do this every year on Labor Day weekend, which starts out at 8 or 8.30, I forget. Eight. That's it. Thanks. Let's go. <laughs>